And how do I get there? There we go. Okay, welcome everyone to the Coach's Corner special episode. We're gonna, as we wait for our guests to, to come in here. Thank you all for joining us on, for a bonus episode on a Monday night. Um, tonight we are doing an episode on how to, uh, how to do video analysis, how to analyze uh, fighting uh, using video. Um, we're going to be using some YouTube clips uh, that we have handy for this. This is an episode that we've been trying to trying to get going for for a little bit, um, and uh, we we had some scheduling issues with uh, Sir Helga, who uh, runs another show uh, on Friday nights. So Friday is a little bit busy for her, so we had to put this on another night. Um, but uh, first, I'd like to introduce uh, some of our our, our guests. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to introduce His Grace uh, Duke Thorfinn and the Cruel from the West Kingdom, who is joining us. Uh, as one of our new coaches. So you'll be seeing him as a regular contributor to the Coach's Corner and to our to our episodes. Um, and so, uh, Thorfinn, would you be kind enough to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, everyone. I'm uh, Kelly Long, or in the SCA, uh, Thorfinn the Cruel. I've been active in the SCA for about 28 years, it looks like, and uh, I just had my 25th 90th anniversary. Um, I uh, one of the founders of the Crapo tournament. I don't know if you've heard of it, but if you haven't, Google Crapo tournament on uh, and watch some videos there. Um, other than that, I've been uh, actively fighting for that entire time, ex you know, excluding, of course, this crazy lockdown thing. So, uh, looking forward to seeing you guys again. Well, so yeah, we we're very excited to have Thorfinn joining us and our coaching staff. Um, he and I have been fighting each other for almost 25 years. Um, and uh, talk on stick for for the whole time. So um, it's great to great to have him. Um, and we also have joining us tonight um, our special guest, uh, Duchess Sir Helga from the West Kingdom. Uh, Helga is one of the best analysts of uh, SCA combat that I have ever met. Um, and so when I I've I've told you this, so don't don't be surprised. <clears throat> it's not like I'm saying something I haven't said to you before. I'm gonna go um, hide under the desk now. But uh, she is she's a fantastic analyst. Um, I love watching her break down video. I love love talking. Always love talking to stick with her. And um, so Helga, would you introduce yourself a little bit and uh, tell us a little bit about the value of uh, video analysis? Hi, I'm Helga. I'm from the West Kingdom. Uh, I've been a knight the whole of like two two years now like brand new baby night um and one of the reasons why i got there is actually video analysis uh, i went through a very long period of a very bad injury i actually wore a shirt so you guys can see it uh, i am covered in scars um and so video analysis video analysis and fight breakdown analysis uh became the way that i came back into the sport um, because I had a developed eye, I could look at myself through the camera and see errors and or damaging behavior much quicker uh, and get over them. Uh, and so video analysis kind of became my, my obsession point for fighters because uh, it is the quickest and easiest tool we have to view ourselves. Uh, when we just have somebody on the sidelines, they're going to see you through what they're working on right now or like how, how they see you as a fighter versus when you just have raw footage of yourself, you can do the cleanest, ruthless self-assessment on your own fighting with nobody else's help. Uh, and so that's the reason why I'm an obsessive compulsive video analyst because <laughs> it's the easiest way to do it. Uh, and it's one of the best tools we have available to us because today you can do it with your cell phone and have 1080p video uh and sit down and geek out with a bunch of your friends no matter what level of fighter fighter you're at right on 
And uh, tonight, also joining us, we have uh, my squire, um, Daniel the Blind. Um, and uh, we, we some of the video that we're going to be looking at tonight uh, is video of his some of his fights from one of our crown attorneys uh, recently. And uh, when you're doing video analysis, it's always handy to have uh, the subject matter present so they can kind of give you some uh, context, some ideas. So, Danny, you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Um, yeah, so I'm um, Lord Daniel the Blind. Um, I've been squired to that guy for uh, a little longer than I care to admit at the moment. <laughs> um, so one of these days, uh, that might change, hopefully. There, there was um, a college I'll, degree in there somewhere. Yeah, you could go to school, raise a family, changing careers a couple of times. Yeah, that'll change things as far as your path, the path to the chivalry. Uh, at the moment, um, I'm just loving fighting. Um, I'm in a spot uh, pre-COVID where I was able to finally really pour myself into the SCA and fighting and training the way I'd always wanted to um, uh, with the diligence and the dedication that I've always wanted to have, but it wasn't able to quite achieve until just a few years ago. Um, and so my fighting uh, has taken off and progressed a lot in the past couple of years, um, past oh, three years now. Uh, and I'm ecstatic to, to see where it goes uh, from here. Um, COVID has facilitated a lot of just self-reflection and pal work past couple of months. And hopefully that'll change in the next couple of weeks or next couple of months. Right on. So Thorfinn, uh, let's have you talk a little bit about what your experience using, um, using video, uh, doing fighting analysis and the, the value of it for us. Yeah, um, you know, all the way back to when I was a squire, my knight had started uh, using uh, video analysis for us after fighter practice. What he would do was uh, we would go, he was a football coach, right? So being a football coach, you can show your players exactly what they're doing wrong if you have it on film. So he's, what he would do is he'd film our practices. We'd go inside after practice, uh, sit down on the couch with him, watch it, talk about it. And then go off to you know beer practice afterwards. But uh, I've, I found it to be a very valuable uh, you know uh, resource because a lot of times someone can talk to you about something that they, that they're trying to explain to you what you're doing, and until you can physically see it, you can't kind of internalize it, right? And so a lot of times it doesn't it doesn't connect until you get that opportunity. So video can be really good for that. And I'm addicted to watching videos. I watch. I mean, I'll be up till three o'clock in the morning watching fight videos on YouTube. And so. Um, uh, you know, it's, if I could just have a channel of that sumo wrestling and maybe rugby, it'd be like the perfect TV channel for me. Right. Um, but, uh, and Alton Brown, but um, yeah. So, I mean, I really think it is a very valuable tool. And I think it's something that uh, especially coming out of COVID when we're all going to be really rusty, it's going to be a way for us to see what we're doing, talk about it and then, and then move forward. Well, working on these things all right so so there is there's a process involved in analyzing video um uh, this is one of the classes that i teach when i do my fighting clinic um and it's it's one of the things i love doing you know we'll get some we'll we'll, we'll fight uh during saturday and just kind of let people just kind of you know knock around and then we'll get some video of it and um and then i'll actually teach a, a process on how to break down video um there's there's a lot of people that will take video and then they don't know what to do with it and you get a lot of you know people that look at it and go Oh, well, there, there's me getting beat. There's, you know, oh, look, I suck. Let me just rewind that and watch me suck some more. Um, but, you know, and that's, that can be fun. Uh, it can be, can be funny to, to laugh at your mates. Um, but the real value in it is being able to identify where your deficiencies are and using that. Um, fighting analysis in general uh, is an absolutely critical skill for for getting better at our sport. I mean, it's it's part of the training process. Um, we have to isolate your deficiencies so that we can know where to where to start eliminating those deficiencies. Um, it is more effective to do fighting analysis live when somebody when something just barely happened, where you can look at it and say you did this, you did this, and and this is how they responded. Much more effective that way because it's real time; it's in the moment, and you can you can catch it while while everything's fresh. Um, but for learning how to do evaluation, it's a lot easier to use video to tr to teach yourself how to do that level of evaluation, where you have the advantage of 
um, slow motion and frame by frame and and what have you. Um, and so so we use video to teach people how to do finding analysis, but ultimately it's it's a lot more effective being able to do it live. And and this is this is part of the process. Um, you know, all of all of us when we go to you know some of the big wars, um, you know, we'll we'll have a line of people that that want to come fight us, and it's because they want to get an evaluation. And you know, Sport of Kings last year, I had my line, and Helga had her line, and you know, Thorfinn's always got a line of people that that. Uh, that want to want to get that evaluation. And so it's critical to be able to learn how to do that. So <clears throat> in, in what the process is, um, so you, you, uh, we're, we're going to use YouTube uh, tonight to show you how to do this. Typically, I do this with my, uh, I have a video camera that I've had for 10 plus years, but as Helga said, uh, it's it's on your phone now. I mean, I tried to buy a camera at, at a Sam's Club recently and, and I went looking for him and, and the guy at the counter said that they don't sell them anymore because what is on your phone is as good as any video camera that you could you could buy now um and there's there's i mean the tools that you can use to, to analyze it right on your phone are, are are pretty slick so you can do it there you can upload those videos to it to another tool you can put them up on the youtube um but as you're looking at videos that are available out in the internet <clears throat> um i know i've got i've got plenty on my channel um and <clears throat> you can just search SCA fighting video, you can just, you'll find it everywhere. And what you do is you can, you can, the tools are available now on YouTube so that you can do, um, you can change the speed and the frame rate of, um, of what you're watching. So you can slow something down as much as quarter speed. Um, there are uh, hotkeys on, uh, hotkey commands on, on the keyboard that you can use to do frame by frame. So once you, um, once you set, um, uh, once you once you set the speed that you're looking at, you can actually use the arrow keys to get frame by frame. Um, and you know, depending on the quality of the video that got uploaded, it might be kind of kind of sketchy, and you might miss some stuff. But you still get enough context that, that you're looking for it. So as we're looking at this process, we need to use uh, we need to look at a, a fight in full speed. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a point at which um, a blow has been acknowledged as as having been received. When we're looking at this, um, be, because we understand that we learn more from our failures than we do our successes, we're going to look at that video and we're going to look at that point of impact where the blow has been acknowledged. And we are going to review that as a failure on the part of who got struck rather than a success on the part of the person who delivered that blow. Um, and that's how it that's how it starts so that we can isolate deficiencies and we can find out what's wrong and what happened and, and like what led to the circumstances where that target became available and how we can shut those things down. Um, that's how we're going to eliminate those deficiencies is being able to see what's wrong and 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 go back to, to how to correct it so we don't get hit anymore. Uh, ultimately, you can use video to, um, to to look at what you did well. Um, you can look at video to see if there's something that somebody is doing that they're successful with and how maybe you can implement it for your for yourself. But when we're looking at this, that's kind of the frame of mind that we're looking at is we're going to look at something from the point that got hit and we're going to look at that as a as a failure rather than a, a success because we want to learn how to stop the failures. Um, success we take as the natural order of things. We expect that there it's going to be that it's going to work the way it's supposed to. Um, so there's there's a limit to how much you can learn from from going over what you did well. Um, you can, but we'll get to that later. So I'm going to go ahead and share. Once I can find it. Which one is this? What's going on? Sorry, sharing is a thing. There we go. All right. 
so uh, so these are some videos we have from Crown Attorney spring of uh, 2019. So uh, that was last year. And uh, these in Artemisia, we do a pooled list. Um, so we have uh, you'll find a round robin in your in your pool. And then um, uh, we'll take the top two fighters out of each pool and we use that to set the quarterfinals. It's a lot like the way they do it in, in rugby and uh, soccer. Um, not rugby, but in soccer tournaments um, uh, in the West Kingdom, they've done it a few times, refer to it as, as a crucible uh, attorney. Um, but, but that's that's a, a format that we've been using for a long time uh, here in Artemisia. And <clears throat> so this upcoming fight that we have is one with uh, Daniel, uh, who on your screen is in the black on the right. And this is Duke Ronan um, from up in uh, Arnhold, Boise area. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go through this, and we're gonna we're gonna take a look and see uh, at the point of which uh, shot is is uh, recognized as being uh, valid. Can you guys see this? Okay. So uh, it looks like this point where Daniel got hit in the arm. Is that about right, Danny? Yep. Um, yeah, he took my uh, sword arm. Right arm, if I remember correctly. Okay. And I uh, dropped my shield and switched by left-handed. Okay. So we can. Um, so on the on the keyboard and. Um, Antonio out in the east uh, posted a link to the hotkey commands uh, for YouTube, which is super handy. Thanks for put, putting that up there. So we can use the arrow key to get us back uh, five seconds at a time. Right about into here. And then we can use the, um, I guess as the period and comma keys, we can use to do just frame by frame. And what we want to do once we recognize that it, that that uh, an impact has been made and a blow has been received, you may have to back this up as much as thirty seconds uh, into the video to get a full context of of, of what happened. Um, I think what we're going to do, I'm going to back this up a little bit more, and we're going to watch it in slow motion. Um, so we have to watch it in slow motion so we can kind of keep track of what's what's happening in the fight um, at a speed where we can kind of follow along. Um, later, we're going to do some frame by frame to get the detail on it. But in that detail, you miss a lot of the context that, that kind of goes in uh, goes into what had happened. So, someone, uh, let's see. I think it is. So we're going to go half speed on this. Okay. Okay, so what we see is um, so Ronan throws an offside right here, offside head. Oh shit! My bad. Technology is a thing. There we go. Okay, so Ronan's throwing an offside here, which Daniel blocks with his, blocks mostly with his sword. And from there, Daniel starts throwing a leg shot. And essentially Ronan comes back to the same targeting quadrant that, uh, that he'd hit before, that got blocked. So Helga, what do you see here? Uh, so one of the things that actually I was going to note right out the gate is uh, they, Daniel, like the entire time you're actually, even though you are progressing forward, you are loaded for defense the entire time, which is actually the reason why he gets you here because you're fighting on the backside of your heels. 
Um, and so as he presses you, instead of being able to step back into your tools and get that secondary block, you're actually lifting and bending, flexing back to try to get that second shot to face the threat. Um, and so this is actually giving him a bigger lane because you cannot disengage from range. You cannot re-increase your range at all. Uh, and this is very consistent in all of your motion. You can actually see that you are always loaded to go backwards, even in a forward motion, because in, you can watch it in the arc of your body and how you're doing it through your spine. So uh, also I'm gonna comment that first offside was flat. Um, Ronan, Ronan's offside, uh, and this is a, oh. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna point this out in a video trick, and this is a really dumb video trick. Watch where your knuckles are, because okay. where your knuckles are is gonna determine where your blade orientation is. Um, and so that's a that's a cheap trick to just look for in all video, in all your videos is check your knuckle check your knuckle rotation. Oh yeah, you're talking about that one right there. That one right there is real flat because you can see the whole back side of his hand. Well, you can also see the quillians in that one. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the quillians straight up. Yeah. Yeah. So, but so. That, that right there, you can actually see how he's flexed all the way backwards because he's on his heels. He cannot actually yeah. physically step back without taking it time to regather his body. Yep. Uh, Thorfinn, you see anything else? Yeah, I was going to say, um, first off, I, I agree with uh, Sir Helga about the fact that you're, you're leaning back, which is causing you to be anchored to the ground, so you can't uh, really adjust at that moment. But the other thing about uh, what happens here is that um, when, when it comes to the point where we get to the offside blow here coming up in a second, you're not tracking him at all. So you're, you're actually his footwork um, because you don't have, like I said, when you were anchored to the ground, you can't move. So he's adjusted his footwork around you. You're still bladed out in a, in a direction completely away from him. And then that's what allows him to get the secondary attack to your arm. Um, but, uh, yeah, other than that, I think that what it is, is that you're, cause right here, you can't move, you physically can't move. And if you look at your feet, they're really close together, yeah. uh, especially, uh, maybe three or four seconds after this, uh, right here, as it goes forward, he, you, tur you turn, but you don't adjust your feet and right. then you are, and it's right there. You can start to see that you're, you're like, your feet are like only inches apart. Yeah. Um, you, you basically have no ability to move at that point. So he's got you nailed to the ground. And so having a broader stance with, on the balls of your feet at all times would have allowed you to maybe uh, address his change of uh, direction. But yeah. I think that's where we're at right now. Yeah, let's also, we're, we'll go back this up just a little bit here as well. Um, and actually just right, look at where your feet are right here. Yeah, they're really wide. Really super wide right there. Um, you don't really have a power base to, to shoot from um, because uh, your your feet are wide enough that you, you don't have a you don't really have any hip rotation. Uh, yeah, you don't have any you don't have any place to, to drive from. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. And, so what I'm what I'm if I could jump on there, Sean. Yeah. yeah. What, what what he's saying is that when your feet are like this, you can't engage your core properly. Right. Right. And so your core is where you're going to generate almost all of your power from. Right. And, and even a lot of the speed of your blow. So having it so far apart and see right now you switch to this right foot, you cannot move off of that right foot. Right. That, that foot is permanent until you adjust everything about your stance, which then you finally did right there. You can, you, you can't move at all. So it allows your opponent to completely move uh, mm -hmm. to a whole nother zone uh, right, right there. So. Well, Danny, I, I, I think this is something you've been working on last year or so with the compass drill, yep. where we, uh, we talked is, about firing shots while you're doing the compass drill, right? Yep. Uh, this is the, that's been the focus of the past, well, this was, uh, when was this? This was spring. Uh, this was uh, a year and a half ago. Yeah. yeah. That's, been, that's been the work uh, for the past year, um, has been uh, to foot, footwork, um, making sure that I'm uh, putting my feet in a way, moving my feet in a way that... Uh, I can move and uh, engage my hips and engage the proper stick mechanics. Um, yeah. yeah, that's been both uh, the both the feedback so far right now is exactly um, what I've noticed from uh, this fight, uh, from this event, and a, a subsequent couple of events afterward uh, was a lot of feedback that I got was, yeah, I need to work on footwork. So that's what I've been doing. Um, yeah, that's- You know, that's and, and this is- 
you know, this is one of the points I often make about doing video analysis is it would be really easy to just look at the one shot that landed and say, oh, well, he's so fast. He just, you know, just got this, just hit me, hit me in the arm because he's so fast. Um, but, you know, what we see from people that actually, you know, Helga and Thorfinn are actually like, like know how to do this. Like there's a lot that's going on here. You know, the the reason you got hit in the arm is because because of your footwork, not because of not because not because of, uh, he's so much better. Which you know he's a duke. He, you know he don't suck, so he does all right for himself. But you know you, we often hear these things. It's like, well, why did you get beat? Oh, well, he, the guy's just better than me. It's like, okay, well then, what are you gonna do about it? You know how you, how do you fix that? Yeah, Thorfinn. You know, another thing along those same lines of saying like, well, how did I get beat? Or that guy's just better than me. Uh, sometimes it's that you're creating a situation to allow their timing to work better, right? And so it's not that it, the blow was that much faster. It was just that honestly, uh, you had put yourself in a situation that, uh, that for you to react to it uh, played into his timing. And so it seemed faster. It seemed, you know, like, well, that was out of nowhere. And it was... Out, it was because of mispositioning and things like that. Like, like your shields in a kind of an awkward position right here, your footwork really close. Um, so those are, those are the kind of things I would say uh, that you would need to want to work on right here from watching this fight. If I was live with you right now. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And um, going into this crown, um, I had a pretty good idea where my fight was. Uh, and so um, some of my my goals, my objectives were to uh, really just fight my fight and and not and not try and do anything better than what I was capable of and just like be me. And and so through Which is something uh, else we talked about right right before that list. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, know what you know and just fight your fight. And um, so going into this, uh, I had a pretty good idea. Uh, where my skills were and and what my strengths were going in and um, Sean, we're gonna go through a couple of the other uh, yeah, we're gonna through actually. Hugo's got so something here for you. I'll elaborate uh, here in a minute on more of that. On, on more of the the breakdown of the video wise, um, there's an interesting tell here that's very common in a mid range fighter. By the way, um, besides the feet and the next secondary stacking in it, so we go feet, hips, shoulders like arm mechanics, like we stack from the ground up. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of us here are, you know, we, we speak in that language. Um, so when we're talking about bending backwards in the fight too, that, t that speaks to a core weakness. Um, that is fundamentally a breakdown between the shoulder and hip to knee connection. Um, okay. And so this is also why you can twist and still throw. Um, and then it's killing your recovery. Um, and so you can actually see your recovery degrades through this video real quick. The higher the pressure, the more you twist, the more your recovery back to home degrades. Uh, and that's actually a core problem. And so if you're watching video of yourself and you're seeing yourself lean back, once you fix your feet, the next thing you need to do is fix your core strength and how you're loading through your core because that will keep you centered and over the top of yourself. Seven minute high intensity workouts. Yep. <laughs> And uh, with you being uh, fighting with your offhand here, this uh, the ending of this goes pretty quick. This is, yeah, this is ugly. This is my left hand. <laughs> <laughs> so probably probably not gonna probably not not gonna break this now because we've got another one coming up that I think is, uh, is is better. Yeah, this is rough. Your footwork's better for it because you're afraid. I yeah, uh, my mechanics, my left hand are getting better though. Uh, past about oh, three weeks, man, I've been putting in the grind on my left hand to make it better yeah i think he just kind of powered through you you had thrown one shot and didn't really have much recovery on it yeah so you come in here you throw yours uh look where your feet are Right, super wide oh, uh, stance on your feet to be throwing mm -hmm. that, right? So you throw this here, he blocks off of that. You never really got your recovery. Yep. I never really got another opportunity for, or I never recovered and never got another shot off. Yep. And he just basically blocked the one and, and fired into it. So, <clears throat> uh, let's see, you got another, this is this is the other one I was looking at. That's pretty good, uh, pretty good example of what you're looking at. So this is, um, Danny fighting Sir Balinor. Balinor is also from up in uh, Arnhold. Um, 
I think uh, me and Valorant are coming out of the pool in this one. Uh, Valorant yeah. was one of the two losses that I had in that uh, in the pool uh, in that list. So, um, so again, we're gonna we're gonna uh, scroll back and we're gonna look at this full speed to begin with. Uh, we didn't really kind of we didn't we'll, we'll we'll watch this again full speed um, when we get done, which we didn't do on on that other one. But that's part of the process too. Is once you do the frame by frame stuff and you go over it, you need to go back and look at it full speed again. So you can see the whole thing uh, with a better context of, of what happened. And it's not just because you know what's happening in this particular fight. It's because you have a better understanding of the analysis in general and you can see the fights happen. Uh, but you're gonna see as, as, you know, when you first look at something, when you don't know what's what's happening, it's the first time you've seen video. You know, ours, it, it's a fast sport, right? um and and things happen really fast and it's hard to keep track and, and that's why you know we can't just look at it full speed and, and figure out what what happened so we're gonna do uh look at this one and get hit in the leg yep So we're gonna we're gonna slow this down to quarter speed. So you throw high and your shield goes up with you and it's already up there but then yeah that I put it way up there yeah and then that's just thought for days yeah so thorfinn what do you think Okay, yeah, first off, um, as we roll forward from here, um, your shield's in, in, it is in the wrong position for that style of shield. Um, the, uh, everything went black. I don't know what's oh, going on. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so it, what's happening is, is uh, as you came in, your, your shield came up with your opponent, right? And then uh, a real common mistake is when action starts is to table your shield. So your arms coming up, your left arms coming up, and it's causing you to have a, this table shield, which takes away the entire strength of this style of shield. So this is a, it's a uh, kind of a, the heater is a, like a, a duck block type thing for the top. And then the, you pop the elbows really basically mm -hmm. and squat to block the leg. And as you come in, you throw your shot here, bang, you completely leave your shield behind you. So now it's, it's first off, it was almost like, behind you at that moment and then it just kept getting higher yep. right and and what it is is this is a breakdown of form i think really is the biggest problem here is that if you were to maintain your shield form you would have been able to clear that zone probably okay even if that offside head didn't work and it looks like your footwork's a little bit better on this this particular fight as you come in um it, in my opinion that's the biggest the biggest breakdown here is your, your shield's really high already right here and I don't know if it's because this guy's tall and you're trying to cover with that, that corner. Um, but, but as you watch right here, your legs complete, it's, it's above your hip even. And then he just does a straight snap into your leg. So uh, it's, that's more of a, uh, just a lack of uh, form and that's easy to train, you know, just hell work and practice. That's how you fix that. Work on keeping the, the, She'll right at home. Um, yeah, exactly. You got to find that. You got to get used to that home space where it's going to be. That's like all the time there. Like you should be able to stand in front of your TV and hold your shield in form for five minutes, right? Because because mm -hmm. the heater is really nice because it kind of locks into the body too. So you have that kind of, you know, the the the, the ability to to kind of couch it into your your body. Um, but that's really what's going on here is that is uh it's it's not like there was any kind of magical thing that he did to get that leg shot it's just that um you you no, literally yeah. just gave it to him 
Yeah, I, so, totally, yep. I totally fed it to him. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that's Shoot a bad thing. What I'm saying is it's a pretty common mistake. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I understand. And so, uh, so understand yeah. it's a, it's a, but it's also being very common. It's easy to fix. So hey, that's, okay. it, that's was it. Yep. So I'm going to roll with this one is uh, you're, I'm going to take a wild crack at it. You're five, seven to five, eight. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, <laughs> you are showing a classic sign of fighting to your opponent's height here. Everything that Thorfinn said is 100% valid. Here's probably the reason why it's all valid. This is the reason why your footwork is better in this one. I'm going to put big giant quotes in there is because you are now drawing your body up to try to match your opponent's height. So your fight with Ronan, you are down at your own height. So we're seeing you bend backwards because you're on the offense. Uh, you're on the defensive all the time on your feet. This one, because you were drawing yourself up to his height, fictitiously puts you forward on your feet. You can actually see the reason why you got hit here. You can already see the lean back that we already talked about earlier. But the lean back is made a little straighter and a little bit more upright because now you're trying to match his height to control his weapons. And so one of the things that I'm going to say here is you have no faith in your own ability to control a fight at your own height. You are mimicking your opponent too much when you walk in, which means you're actually not addressing them. You're trying to like mirror them and then control the fight. Uh, so this, this actually speaks to you needing to learn down to get down and back into your power. We're going to go right back into core. We're going to go right back into connecting your hips and your shoulders. You have to be able to do that to maintain your own height and stop mimicking theirs in the fight. Yeah, right so, on. All right. So basically, what it comes down to me for comes down to you for me is is like Thorfinn said, it's it's shield discipline. Um, it's um, you know, the, and it, and it may some of that you know, like they're both saying, there's um, you're fighting somebody who is slightly taller. Because I think Balinor is six foot. So I mean, I mean, that's like fighting yeah, me. He's, you he's know, he's taller than me, but I'm he's not. He's not. He's not a giant. You know. Yeah, he's pretty average. Um, it's just like it's just like fighting me. Um. And, uh, but yeah, you're, you're, everything went up high, um, and, and like much, much higher than it, than it is. Um, cause I know, you know, yeah. your, your shield position, very similar to mine where that, that point is forward. Um, mm -hmm. but one of the things you have to understand about having that point out is there is, there is the cone of defense <clears throat> that you get from being able to intercept a blow further out, but that gap between your shield and your knee really is that big. And when you start there and then you lift it higher to match a taller opponent, that's, that's yeah, a recipe for disaster. So, uh, <clears throat> so let's back this up, back this up again, and we'll go ahead and watch this uh, full speed again to give us, so we can kind of see, we're following along. And like I said, when you when you see that happen full speed, you get an understanding that like our fast our sport is fast. <laughs> things happen really fast. Yes, Helga. Um, one of the things I'm also gonna say, like just pointing out, just in that little chunk, is uh, he's also right now facing the center line on his opponent, not facing the threat, and so thus he actually can't get to that threat at all in the process. Which again, compounded by standing tall and reaching out to try to control that line, he's he's fictitiously trying to block that versus just if he faced the threat versus facing his opponent, uh, that's gonna, th that'll stop a bunch of these problems real fast. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, the ending of this ends up being uh, some shield discipline as well, but also a good, uh, a good example of how this, how this breaks down. So uh, again, we're gonna watch this full speed to start with. And then, uh, So that, yep. Yep, shield discipline. <clears throat> I mean, you, you blocked a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Just moving it way too much. And then, with like half the movement. And then there's this. <laughs> yeah, and then there's oh, he's still in range. Yeah, like I say, you came in and and yeah, there's there's. I mean, once once he gets in closer, you actually blocked like three or four of his shots right here. 
of course, most of those were, were flat and would have been questionable, but <clears throat> yeah, you block some stuff. And he's, he, you can you see where your sword is in front of your shield right there? Right in this general area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> your, your sword is in front of your shield, uh, which means it's, it's bound. Um, mm -hmm. Like the, you, you, you don't really have control of your tools. At I, this point. I remember thinking that in that fight of uh, not, not having good recovery happening and and getting right. all bound, binding myself yep. up. And that's part of recovery. Recovery is offensive recovery and defensive recovery, and they are both um, the single greatest failing in our sport. It's the thing that people fail to do most often. I remember vividly after this fight going, "Oh man, that was." Yeah, I remember this big time. Oh, and this one here, he throws an inside slot that totally misses here. But this is this is where things kind of fall apart. And I think it's because, well, I'll let, uh, I'm, I'm going to give Helga a shot at this one first, and then I'll, I'll let you know what I think. Okay, so you want to give me a shot at, like, why it fell apart? Yeah. Well, besides the fact that he just gave up? Yes. Uh, it's like... <laughs> He just stop gave up the fight. Like emotionally, this is this is the fighting. first time I've actually seen. It. So I was gonna give you like mad props because I also think that in video breakdown, uh, especially with having a student there while you're going over it, you need to be able to highlight some of the good things. Um, so, kind of, I'm sorry. This is where I'm gonna say the one thing that I was gonna highlight. I just watched you surrender completely. Um, oh, yeah. Like in your first fight, even when you get armed, you don't you didn't surrender your ability to try to bring it to the fight. Even if you were playing around with something and you could tell you were nervous fighting left-handed by how you approached the fight and your body language changed, you still brought it right here. You just, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Up. Like you literally were like, boom, this is over instead of readdressing the threat at all. And so I would say that emotionally you lost this fight. Like, right there no oh, i emo emotionally i lost that fight when he when i got legged i was i was frustrated uh and mad uh that i moved my shield that much i remember in the fight going oh i just gave him that leg shot mm -hmm. and being mad uh, i was frustrated with myself in that moment um because i felt pretty good going into this uh tournament and so uh, my connection is unstable i might get booted off again um uh and so i remember i remember when he legged me i went ah I can't like being legged against him is going to be rough. And so, yeah, I just dropped my shield um, and gave it to him. Yeah. Uh, Thorfinn. I mean, oh, sorry. Go sorry. Ahead. I know that you've got the, the nickname, the blind. What is your, what is your actual sight? Um, with blind. With correctness, this is good. <laughs> um, without my contacts, I'm legally blind. Um, I, I, I'm assuming you fight in your contacts though, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not functional without my contacts. Okay. Um, you're showing signs of actually not having uh, depth perception in your fights too. Um, and this may be a range and training thing here, um, but you're, you're surrendering at the edge of range a lot. And when you approach the fight, um, you're actually like, when he approaches you legged, you're like jerk reacting. So there's somewhere in your vision or your training where you're missing when they're catching to the edge of measure. Like your danger zone radar does not exist at the edge of measure. And I don't know if that's actually a sight thing or if it's a training thing. And it'll be very interesting to see how you continue to develop because we're going to look at some of your later fights. But when you gave up this fight, you gave up this fight at the edge of measure. He could just hit you. That's the edge of measure. Your brain did not hit. I'm still under threat there. So that's yeah. something to, that, and that's, that happens in your other fight too, where that edge of measure is like a free zone that they get emotion in without you responding to. And then and, you're like, ha, oh crap, now I'm here. And, um, and, and so that's something to watch for in like later videos as we go on. Yeah, cool. All right, Starfin. I got a question. Uh, when your when your weapons uh, got kind of uh, tangled up, did you feel like kind of confused and like like kind of lost where, where you were at? Uh, I don't know if it was confused and lost so much, so much as uh, frustrated uh, and okay. maybe um, a little bit panicked uh, of going, ah, crap, I need to get my stick back to a better position. Right. Uh, and yeah. so um, yeah, I, I could understand that because the way you react afterwards, like from that point on is completely reactionary. You don't, you know what I mean? What? So yep. you kind of crumble right here. Yep. And, and I think it's that, that, that moment where all your shit is tangled up and you're kind of trying to get back to a home position, because if you would have had good shield work, right, where, right, we're at right now, there's a really good chance you could have hit him with an offside head. 
and and that would have been a really you know it, but that would have been you being um having all your stuff in place yeah. right yeah i have the um, target there but yeah so what zones do you feel comfortable fighting in so i don't know if you want to call it a b c or one two three one being the closest three being the furthest which is your comfort um, zones so my comfort zone is uh mostly c to d or uh well um no b to c okay um, so you're like you like mid and outside fighting yeah i like mid and outside i like to be uh in a spot where i can generate a target and then uh, hit it from relatively far away like pretty far reach uh are my comfort zones uh where i really need to work is at the farthest range so at the i obviously here um, I need to work on that one. Then I need to, uh, I need to work on the closest. I need to work on a big time. Yeah. So uh, what I think what he does here is he, he manages to take advantage of that right here. Yep. And, uh, you'll see that he just kind of goes from a quick, um, kind of mid to close range attack on you and, and, and gets that <laughs> shot that kills you. Um, so coming up here, he's going to throw that offside body, hits the ground, steps back, you're missing there tangled up and then he sees the opening you don't but the thing is that you kind of just gave up right there yep. and and didn't actually get back on guard um and and he managed to beat you there that's that's really just kind of uh <laughs> again training is gonna you know helmet time that's gonna fix that problem i'm, I'm wondering also um about uh what helga said about uh my vision um i don't remember the timeline on it um if this was pre my new contacts or not. Oh, well, that could be a big change. Yeah, you may uh, not be reacting. 2019. Spring so I'm, I'm very similar to you. I, I, without my glasses or my contact lenses, I really can't see anything. No, but with, exactly. with my contacts or glasses, I'm 2020, right? <clears throat> um, and uh, so if I was to not have them on, I wouldn't see anything. I wouldn't be able to fight. So if yeah, you're having I, I vision issues, you want to make sure you check. You and I've got like, I've got some incredible new contact lenses that are uh, like crazy and weird. And uh, they've changed the way I fight. They changed the way I mountain bike. They've changed so many things about my life. And so I am wondering, I need, a little, I need to do some really self-reflection on that one and see how that's changed my vision at range. I throw my helm on and, and look through it and think about it. I, yeah. I'd, be, I'd be super curious about it. Like I'd actually put colored tape down and like check your range vision because this your entire fight speaks to a vision problem like yeah right, and right um, edge of measure and and like i was like um so with my new lenses i definitely am seeing um better uh at close ranges uh, but that at that far range uh i'm not 100 sure um i need to i need to do some real uh looking into it that's a, some good input i really appreciate that so the the thing that I'm seeing and kind of goes along with what they were uh, both talking about is as as you <clears throat> as he finishes this shot here, he is clearly backing up because he jumped in, he threw three or four shots, they didn't work, and now he's getting out of this, and you end up throwing. Uh, you, I I think you sense that the pressure is off, and that he's leaving, and so you're taking a shot at him as he's as he's going. Um, and you know, like Thorfinn was saying, if you were, if you were in a better, if you had a better power base to shoot from, you probably could have gotten an offside leg or an offside head off of that. Um, but you're, you're throwing this flat snap and coming off that flat snap, even though he's, he's going back, <clears throat> you throw this flat snap and your recovery just goes all the way through. It's like, you can tell that you're just like, you're not really in a good, like I said, you don't have a good shooting platform. So this shot that you're throwing, um, you know, you're you're kind of lucky to get a shot off at all, but you're just not set up to recover off of that. And with that recovery, everything just kind of comes, everything is just like your balance is everywhere right here. And, and you know, and, it, you know, he's backing out, you're taking a shot at him you know at this distance it looks like he's still leaving and you can see what he has to do to change I'm backing up here a little bit watch what he has to do in order to change his stance to, to be able to get the shot off he has to lunge at this mm -hmm. when he sees that you know so it's i mean he was going backwards so you you caught that part right he was going backwards and you're taking a shot off on it um but you kind of let everything kind of come through and just 
kind of hang there. And I mean, right there, this is where he sees it. Like your whole head is is wide open right here. And now he's got to, you know, lunge forward to get it. And it gets it right at the tip there. So shield discipline and all their stuff. Dorfin, yes. And to be honest with you, if his footwork was better on that, then he could have you know, not had to do that serious lunge like that. Right. Right. And so, you know, that was that was where that his little yep. failure right there was. So the footwork seems to be a thing here. Yeah, I'm into it right now. <laughs> yeah. Like Helga said, I've been I've been thinking a lot about it. So wow. but also footwork wins fights, man. Yeah, totally. That totally, was fun. Totally. Thank you for letting us uh check those out. Yeah, we got a couple more here, but I wanted to check the comments over on the uh over on the, the Facebook feed there, see if we have any questions or comments that we can uh we can address. We always yeah. like always like having the comment the questions. Um yeah. Why do you have me on the spotlight video? <laughs> you're mean. Why do I have you on spotlight? Yeah. Aw, because you're such a doll. Aw. <laughs> Fine. We'll put my ugly mug up there instead. Hey, you're the <clears> professional <throat> here. Oh, careful how you use that kind of language. <sighs> you called me an expert earlier. I'm going to call you a professional. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, isn't, isn't there a meme that says, convince me that I'm wrong? I... <laughs> <laughs> all right um, so yeah i'm not seeing any questions specifically up here but um so i, yeah, I so, actually have a, i have a dumb question that i sent you in chat uh he's he didn't start out fighting with you or danny yeah no he didn't i okay, picked him up cool from, from i was like i wanted to double check i'm like mm, that looks like a two <clears throat> three year old uh sean student right there after um, had a couple years of uh bad training beforehand yeah i mean i i picked well i picked him up from one of the mercenary groups um and uh and then shortly after i made him a squire there was um he he went to school um and that that took a while there was finishing school getting his degree and then you know uh changing careers and then life and whatnot um so uh yeah his fighting right now is probably yeah, about three years in, really. I mean, realistically, for for as long as as he was kind of out, you know, going to school and uh, you know, life being what it is and everything, and dramatic upheaval and changes. Um, yeah, his his uh, his his fighting is realistically probably three years old. Mm -hmm. So right, nice, cool. nice catch. Yes, sir. It's orphan. And I just say, like, uh, I just want to say it was really brave of him to to you know let us tear apart his you know fighting and I, it's got to be really uh i i understand so I, i'm gonna tell him i think that uh that with the opponents you had you did actually pretty good mm -hmm. i mean i think that uh you have a lot of stuff to learn and a lot of you know growth but at the the core of it i think you you've got a lot of potential so thank you uh that that crown was a big deal um so like yeah, my, my squire belt is old, um, but my actual uh, real training in this sport and really uh, being able to really jump in as deep as I have always wanted to is is fairly new, uh, just a few years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I, mean, I, I appreciate that. But that that crown, yeah, that was that was a big deal. Uh, it was a it was a ton you know, of fun. It was both, a big big. Both those fighters moment. were expert fighters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're definitely top of the game. So letting you know, you know, let's. Thank you. No, no, no harm to you. <laughs> yeah. Thank right. you very much. I understand. All right, brother. Um, okay, let's go on to the next thing, man. All Thanks. right. So we have. Yeah, just... Let me see if I can get back to the. <laughs> now Thorfinn's the spotlight. Oh yeah. yeah. I like how your arm keeps coming in and out. I was kind of tripping on that too. Like, <laughs> what's going oh. on with my arm? <laughs> I try to. Use, I, I teach school, and I try to use one of those virtual oh. backgrounds. Uh, uh, in a Zoom meeting with my principal a while back, and she was like, "Danny, what's going on with your background?" I'm like, "Virtual background." She's like, "Turn that off." I'm like, okay, fine. You know, I would I like normally... it noted that my squire understands that he's up next, and he is sending me panicked text messages. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him what will be nice. But I, honestly, though, I normally when I do these interview things, I got like a, a Viking tunic on, which is a lighter color, and so it. I just it never has a problem, but this black with the dark, it's kind of cool, right? So. Uh, <laughs> 
anyway, go ahead. Let's let's uh, talk. Yeah. About so let's. Uh, we've got. Um, hang on a second. I'm still. All right. Let me go back to the share screen here. Share computer sound. Optimize screen. Yeah. I like how we're all we're like we're the serious fighters and then all of a sudden we're all like fucking around with our virtual backgrounds. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So are you seeing uh you seen Duncan here? Uh we are on your Facebook feed. I don't want to do that. I'm seeing I'm seeing your Facebook messages, but oh wow. What was that chick's name anyway? I was about to say good thing nobody was sending you anything kinky. <laughs> no kink shaming. Hashtag no kink shaming. Truth. All right. Should be that one. All right. You seen video now? Yep. Yes, I do. All right. So this is uh Helga Squire Duncan fighting uh is, is that Neo? Yep. Yeah. And this is from spring of last year, May ish. Nope, but uh this is five thirteen twenty. So it's only six months old. Yeah, yeah, May ish. All right. Oh. He already looks. He already looks like you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I literally adopted my own problems. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just barely squared this kid, and he already looks like you. Yeah. I like. Uh, I like him fighting in a box, though. I'm guessing that's something both of them needed to learn. This was actually to stop them from running backwards. Yep. Because uh, Duncan doesn't like to, he's getting much better about staying engaged in the fight and allowing the fight to develop around it. Um, and that's, that's the first thing we're working on is kind of like his emotional stability within the fight. All right. So Duncan gets hit in the leg here. So we're going to back down the speed. Okay. I would like you just one second. If you would look at what Neo is doing right now. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier, how he has no core engagement and yeah. is creating range literally by like leaning out. It's yeah, yeah that's that's There's I, I I do some of that, but when I do that, my hips are under me. Yeah. yeah. So you there's a difference between sitting down and pushing yourself back right. and then creating that range versus and leaning just lean, back. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I'm 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 leaning back at the hips, he's leaning back at the shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and which nails his feet to the ground. Yep. So, so he's, and it also steals all the power from the core. So yeah, yeah that's all right. So, oh, dude, let's see. Can I jump in on this one right away? Yeah. Okay. So I fight with a kite shield uh, right now. Currently, I, I fought with lots of different styles of shields. Um, won tournaments with all of them. So, uh, but right now, kite shield is my the one I'm fighting with. The thing with a kite shield is that it is is linear. It has to be. So you have to have the up and down. Your hand cannot rotate around. Uh, if it starts to turn, what ends up happening is the point uh, at the bottom moves drastically. Okay, so uh, like a quarter right. inch movement on your hand, and right. it's several inches on the bottom. And that's what happens here is the, that his shield, as you, uh, or is it uh, is it Duncan's shield, as he comes around here, you'll watch his he's turning his hand and it's nowhere near where it needs to be the whole trick with this is that it has to always say in this line right you can have a, a kick towards your opponent to one side or the other if they're right-handed or left-handed or if they're you know whatever or you're to, to guard your particular stance but if you get that offline you've taken the best leg defense shield and nullified it mm -hmm. yeah. and that's what's happening here is that the reason this leg shot comes in as you can see He's look at the point of this is the exact opposite direction of where it needs to be right now. Right. Mm -hmm. It looks like he's pulling his hand across to make the block. And yeah. as he does, as he does that, the point kicks the opposite way that he wants to go yeah. where it's, and it may seem counterintuitive, but it, you know, he needs to where, where it, when you see a shot coming to your offside, you think that you want your shield to go to the offside. So you put your hand over there. And as he does that and turns it over, it right. kicks that point out where he actually needs to pull his hand back the other way. Exactly right, which would throw to, the point into to it. throw that point the other way, mm -hmm. yeah. And the, and the mass, the, the cool thing about that is the mass and, and impact of you turning your hand and the shield going that direction will actually steal all the strength out of the blow. Yeah. Right? yeah. So just by popping it like that, it's, it's physics, right? Bam, it's just going to yeah. it's gonna slow it down. And what ended up happening here, too, is he didn't trust his shield work, 
right? So he was going to try and do this sword block. And instead of just having his, if he would have trusted in his fundamental shield work, then he would have had open attack right there, offside head, bang. Mm -hmm. Right? And so that's what I think that if if you're going to fight with this type of shield, you've got to practice all the time, get that up and down, right? That's huge. So that's my first input. Thanks, guys. Yep. Well, and, and he's also, I mean, he's in a, he's starting off in a right leg lead, which, you know, there, there are advantages and, dis and disadvantages to the sword leg lead. Um, you know, the advantage is it, it puts your shoulder closer to your target. Um, the disadvantage is it exposes, it exposes your non shield uh, leg. And it's one of those things you have to be aware of how open that is. Um, and, you know, he tried to cover that with just the shield um there was there was no there was really no no footwork involved in in how to do that mm -hmm. i don't know that he was really in a position where he could have anyway but all right helga what are you seeing so overall the theme here for me is feet 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 um like i throw in the 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 feedback on his shield hell yes 100 percent agreed um what sticks out for me in his motion currently is actually his feet. Like I, I, the hands and the shield are a side effect of the fact that he is stepping so deep to generate power in any moment in time. So every step in here is like twice the size it needs to be to break range. It's, you know, and generate power. And so you see him stepping down to load and then go to something, which is making him commit completely to one motion, which he is then trying to have to yank himself back through to recover. And you can see it over and over in this. And there, it's the reason why eventually Neo just works him to a point where he takes a step that's too big that he cannot recover to. And you see him try to recover with that upper body to reach. And he just ditches both his tools into it. Versus if he was taking smaller steps that were actually addressing the line of the fight, that shield would naturally stay in a better place. And it wouldn't leave that damn lead leg hanging out. Um, and the only reason I'll speak to that in such a manner is... This is like watching myself fight six years ago. Like, exactly. I'm like, oh, you could have cut and paste me right here. And I'm like, exactly what I was doing. Um, and so I think that this is just, I need to actually, especially with him, is work on that, like, the steadiness in his steps. So he can then stay connected through that core and address it and work on pushing that tip over versus trying to ditch his hand into it. And the, the compass drill would probably help with that. Yes, agreed. Yeah, like that one right there. That's mm -hmm. a super huge step with that front foot. Yeah, and you can see that like he takes those huge steps, and then that second step that follows is that's when the circle starts for him to throw a shot. Right. That right. first step almost never begets power. It's always to break range. Right. Well, and there's, there's something else going on here, too. As soon as he takes that big step like that. <clears throat> so he, he's... He's taken this step to advance range, right? Mm -hmm. To 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 engage the fight. Uh, let's see if we can get not that one. It's a little little. I'd like to ad address what is going on with that shield. So why did his shield rise up above his head, right there when he first comes into this this shot that he's going to throw at Neo? Um, and this could just be, you know. A, a newer fighters type of uh, uh, thing to you know he doesn't realize he's doing it, but it it uh, he he literally moves his shield right right here. Watch it goes up almost over the top of his helmet, right for no reason. Right there, right, and then Neo didn't even move, <laughs> right so. Okay. Uh, so one of the one of the things about him is he's a little bit reactionary. Uh, so we're working on like calming his fight down and getting him to see his opponent. Right, so he'll yeah. react to things that aren't there yet. Exactly. Like, and that's... In, in like, it's that like, I'm going to tense and I'm going to do something over here because this is what it should be next. Um, right. Versus like waiting for, he's not seeing his opponent at all yet. Uh, this is what I would uh, consider a typical blind spot in like, again, like that breakover from like a newer fighter to that mid-range fighter where they start getting super jumpy is because they've learned enough that, you know, this next shot should come into this zone somewhere maybe, but they haven't developed the sight to watch their opponent yet. And it, he's showing yeah. very classic examples of that right now with that like no, no, jump no. in and out of range and then like spook at something that doesn't exist yet, which means exactly, he's fundamentally yeah. not seeing what's in front of him. 
and I, I think that's also mm -hmm. like a fear of um, of messing up. And so what they're doing is they're over committing to something. When if you had like just trusted, if you build a solid fundamental set of skills, you would have been in position to block whatever that guy threw at you anyway. So you could have moved into that zone, thrown your shot, and had your shield not move at all, and then address their attack if they attack. Yeah. Right? yeah. Instead of like oh. getting yourself <laughs> discombobulated by moving all your shit around. Mm -hmm. Agreed. He but, actually just texted me. He's like, I totally thought Neo was throwing a shot. Right. <laughs> which, Neo, which Neo was just blocking everything. Yeah, and see, here's here's the thing I was gonna I was gonna notice too is there's this this one right here where he just you know he's taking this big step right here, right? Let me back this up just a little bit. All right, so he's gonna take this big step in here, right? We were talking about earlier, yeah. And he he backs up with that second foot, and then Neo like so it takes us it takes a certain amount of resources to engage the fight, right? You have to decide that you're prepared to engage and be there. So he's expended all of this energy in, right. in deciding he's going to engage the fight. And then Neo just didn't really throw anything. Yeah, just yeah. kind of like, actually, all really, all, all Neo does here is he just has accepted that we're engaged. Yeah. And, yeah. and when he did that, Duncan bailed. He exactly. Was, It'll totally be like this it's right here. What, what yeah, Neo does this. is Neo just goes into a standard like I'm yeah. blocking, you know, right? I'm in my I'm, I'm in my guard, and that and that freaks him out a little bit. I think right yep. here. And like, that's like, he, you guys. Yeah, Neo didn't even throw a shot. He's just like, oh, we're gonna fight. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he's like, so when you when you when you expend the energy, the um, the emotional energy, to actually engage the fight, you need to be ready to fight. Yeah, you, you, might as well use it, right? you might as well use it because you've expended that as a as a resource right and and you ha and and for him to leave he gave he expended that resource and he gave it away for nothing exactly mm -hmm. right he got nothing and, out and, of it yeah and and he got nothing out of it he expended the resource and people don't understand how like emotional input is is exhausting you know that thing where you say oh okay we're gonna go and you have this build up like okay we're gonna fight now oh you know i mean that that takes in it there's a certain emotional expenditure there that people don't account for and when you've done that you're like okay let's go oh shit let's go well let's go back you know that costs emotional resources and it's exhausting and it'll get you killed and that's exactly what he did here he's like okay let's fight oh shit no let's not fight mm -hmm. and and neo like did nothing didn't it right. cost him nothing yeah yeah Hel helga um, I would actually, so uh, if Daniel doesn't mind uh, comparing the two that we just watched. Um, yeah. Daniel, you still with us? I see his videos yeah. out. But... Um, yeah, I'm still here. I've got a pack of kids in the room, so. so okay. All right. Do you mind we're if totally, I do, you mind if I do a compare and contrast real quick? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so we just watched Daniel fight, and now we're watching uh, Duncan fight. And in the process, we actually have the same problem showing up in two different forms. Both are not recognizing measure and how to deal with measure uh, and that that range control. And so what I would say is Daniel has where he's got almost blind spots to it. So like he's he's passing measure almost freely. Uh, D1 is showing the opposite of this problem where he's when he passes measure, he's like really, really wound. He's super emotionally invested in breaking measure. Um, and so he's very, very aware of that break of measure and it's almost like a panic spot. So either either he's in or he's out of measure versus Daniel is not recognizing that threat bar right at measure where like he's passing through it like ho-hum. Um, and so it's the same problem with two different presentations. Both of them are not actually visualizing where the threat actually is. If that makes sense at all. Yeah. Yeah, totally. No, I, I'm with you entirely there. Um, Huggy, you might want to, where his feet are right here, mm -hmm. you might want to have him uh, curl his toes under. He doesn't, uh, doesn't have a good power base to shoot from. Yeah. And see this 90 degree angle right here. There's nowhere for him to generate yeah. uh, motion from. Also, again, we're seeing that back tilt. Now he's trying to create height by tilting back. Yeah. Yeah. So he's, I mean, he's straight up. Uh, he doesn't have any support behind him. 
there's the, he can't push off on his, on his toes, can't push off on his feet. So really as Neo comes in, there's only one direction for him to go. And that's on his back. Hey, Sean, can you go back like two or three seconds? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Perfect. At the beginning of this, this set here, he he's, I mean, his shield looks like it's good position. He's got his, his sword up there for that kind of a, that sword block. And then all Neo does here is, Set his shot, he throws through, and then watch the shield. Not, sh I mean, uh, not uh, on Duncan's shield. Mm -hmm. So here he goes, and we're going to attack now. And then it's going to, it just pops up again. Yeah, Neo's fucking with him pretty hard. There we that go. Right there. Yep. Mm -hmm. And and really, Neo has has presented an attack, but he has. But I mean, I don't know. Has actually done anything? Yeah, exactly. I don't know how much of a real threat that is, right? He just kind of wiggled his sword around a lot uh, for maybe two or three seconds. Um, whatever the fake was, it he bit on it really hard, and instead of like like having just enough to come up and block, he just completely covers his head, like. You know, look at his shield now. And now he's blind. Now he's shooting. Yeah, that, now he's throwing shots blind. That's what I'm saying. Is that yeah. without having you know, like, he, it's a it's a breakdown again of, of fundamental shield work here. Mm -hmm. Is if the, if he would have had it in position, there's nothing really Neo could have done with that any of those shots, right? And then he well, all he did was blind himself and then expose the entire left side of his body to attack. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, a remember, you know, we're, when we're working on Pell work, when we're working at practice is keeping the shield in the right position. Every time you throw a blow, every time you adjust your stance uh, or facing your opponent, make sure that your shield is centered in the right place. Right. And that's, that's, we're, we all need to work on it. Um, but in this particular case, that was a, a, the failure, a big failure right there, which unfortunately Neo didn't get to capitalize on. Uh, yeah, I don't think Neo was in a, he wasn't uh, close enough range to actually do it because he right. wasn't, because, you know, he was using the sword work to kind of probe stuff, yeah, he but just he wasn't, wasn't in a position to uh, take advantage of anything. <laughs> so I've got a, I've got a thing on this one that is like just a kind of a general thing when watching, when watching video about two people, and I'm just going to kind of start talking in generalities for yes. a moment is one you can see neo is literally standing in range and there's no threat being put at neo so he right. gets to free work there there is so he he you and you can see it in his body language that he literally just starts screwing around at one point to see what yeah. he can produce out of the other fighter and push yeah he um, no threat here yeah and as he feels less and less threat his body mechanics actually go to shit yeah, they're totally terrible right Yeah, now. like they're, he's <laughs> they're square really nice. on. You can tell there's no engagement through the core. His shoulders are leaned back. He's literally doing the rock in and out of range motion with both of his hands yeah. doing, like his hands and his shield are doing this in and out of range. This is not probing range. This is literally the lazy man's way to see if you can get them to fire. Um, yeah, I agree. One of the things with D1 right here, or Duncan right here, sorry, there's, there's a couple Duncans. So there's D1 and D2. Um, <laughs> And so Duncan right here is also, you can see that his mechanics have failed at this point in time. Uh, Sean pointed out earlier that he doesn't have his toes curled under, which means he actually can't push his hips. Um, you, it's very, very hard to push with your, hip, uh, your knees flat on the ground like that without your toes to actually use as a little bit of a leverage point. Um, but you can actually see as this fight goes on and Duncan gets tired, every shot is like it stops at his shoulder and you can see in his body because he'll throw there's no motion into his body so when you're watching fights and watching video and assessing yourself you actually need to not be looking at what your hand is completely doing at all times you actually need to look at how is this motion connecting to your body to your hips to your knees then to your feet and he is this video is a great example of both fighters letting it break down to the minimal like joint use basically they're using their elbow and part of their shoulder and nothing else that's a very tiring fight because now you're not maintaining all muscles to fire from you're going to wear out your own arm in this and you can see this fight degrade overall as it goes along yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and watch this full speed, uh, and then we're coming up on quarter till right here. So we'll, uh, we'll kind of wrap up with some thoughts here, but we'll watch this whole thing full speed. 
and again, once you know, once we've gone over it slow motion, we've gone over it frame by frame. We kind of looked at all these things. We definitely need to go back and watch it again full speed, so we can have that full context, so we can um, get better at watching fighting full speed. Because again, it's more effective to do this analysis live and in person. And that means that you have to be able to see things that are happening really, really fast. Mm -hmm. And so we use these, you know, use YouTube and, and whatever video we have to do this frame by frame, to break things down, to teach us how to do analysis in general. Um, and, uh, and that, that makes us better analysts. And that is how we get that evaluation for a fighter so that we can tell them what they need to start working on, send them back to practice and, uh, and get going. So we're going to watch this whole thing full speed. Yeah, let me back it up a little more. There we go. It's literally like watching myself fight. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Yeah, yeah, Duncan just really does. He has no shooting platform. <laughs> I mean, if he was to blade his body out even a little bit, it, you know, it would allow him to at least have a hip rotation in there. But, you yeah. know, squared up with his feet like that, uh, it's really going to be difficult if you don't have really strong upper body. Um, one of the things I wanted to say uh, real quick is that I totally agree with uh, Sean on the idea that in person the analysis is is critical, right? And learning how to do it in all the classes I teach when I when I go to some place to do it, one of the first things that I do is sit down with each set of fighters and watch them fight, and then I tell them like, so I can see what they're doing with their shield, their stance, their power generation, how they're you know where they put their sword. All of those things play into the entire analysis of that fighter where they're at right then. And so in real time, it's really, that's a really valuable tool. And analyzing video like this can help you learn to spot these things. So uh, this is a good tool. Yeah. All right. So like I said, we're coming up on uh, court. So I don't, don't really see any questions out in the Facebook feed, but definitely appreciate the, the comments that are, that are coming through. Um, so uh Danny, thanks for letting us uh, use you and abuse you. Um, and uh, Helga, if you'd be kind enough to send a, send a message to your squire, let him know we appreciate us uh, abusing him in his absence. Can do. So Helga, any uh, last minute thoughts on uh, this process? Uh, last minute thoughts. And so since this is geared towards like starting to learn how to analyze video uh, and how you can develop it is remember that when you're starting to analyze video, you're going to see your own faults in other people. So like what you are working on, what your brain is grinding through while you're fighting, you're going to see those faults faster in other people. That might not be the root cause issue, but start talking about those things. Give yourself a platform and also be willing to be wrong. Um, Sean has dealt with me for years, sending him video and then like a two page breakdown. And then he would go through and like make notes and be like, cool, you're seeing this too early. This is actually the root cause of like where this is going and then get feedback seek out other analysts uh, to learn and don't be afraid to reach out. You are not going to be perp perfect at this. You're going to miss things. Um, and that's how we get better is by play and practice while doing this. Um, and so start early and start often and just have fun with it. Also, the one thing I'm going to tell you is when you start doing this, you must remember to be kind to yourself. Um, if you're starting to watch your own video, you're going to see things that you didn't think were there. Um, like I am mean at myself some days about how I break down my own video and my own fights. Uh, and that's a trait that I have to watch for. Um, and so don't become abusive. It's ruthless self-assessment, not abuse. And so remember that if you can spot the errors, you can then work on them and build from them. And so forgive yourself, move on, make a plan. Yeah, that's, that's one of those things that's always in, important to uh, note about ruthless self-assessment is 
you know, we, we have to look at things critically, um, you know, because it's, it's really easy to look at your fights and especially the fights you win and feel good about, you know, having won a fight. But that ruthless self, self-assessment comes in and, and just like there's got to be there's there's improvements to be made um, and it is ruthless, but it's not cruel. You know, that's what Helga is saying is like you, you, you can't constantly be mean to yourself. You just have to look at this as like it's not you know, it's, it's not a character assault. It's, it's, uh, it's a deficiency, you know, we isolate it as a deficiency and we, we fix that, you know, um, and that takes a certain degree of humility, but it's, it, it can't be cruel because if you're just going to be mean to yourself, then, you know, you're, you're not really interested in making yourself better. You just, you know, making excuses for why you suck. So let's look at, look at the deficiencies and fix them. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Thorfinn, any last minute thoughts for you? Yeah, to kind of carry on what you're saying, remember that this is a martial art. And in any martial art, you you know, no one ever fully masters that martial art. We're all moving forward. So it's okay to, that's what practice is for. Practice is for us to see these things and fix them, right? To try and better our martial art. And and so it's okay to to self-analyze and don't beat yourself up, but at the same time, be honest. And uh, that allows you then to see the whole fight. The whole object of this is to, to move yourself forward to how, the best that you can be in, in your martial art, right? So that's through self-learning. So that's okay too. Um, all right. Other than that though, I really enjoyed uh, sitting to get to talk with you guys and uh, analyze the, uh, both fighters set of fights. I appreciate uh, them putting themselves out there. Okay. Yeah, uh, so, my square I sense of work with you guys again. Sorry. Was that Helga? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Thorfinn. Uh, <laughs> I said my square. My square says thanks. Oh, mm. uh, <laughs> he says thank you very much for the feedback. He's going to incorporate it and uh, already tagged me to be like, "Hey, Knight, I want training time with Thorfinn." <laughs> <laughs> we we all do. <clears throat> well, again, Danny, thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, thanks for letting us uh, pick that apart. Glad to glad to have you. Um, yeah. I it's been it. uh, yeah. So, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, for joining us tonight um, for this uh, bonus episode, um, special episode. And in case you had missed it, uh, the reason we had to do this on a Monday is because uh, Helga there is one of the hosts of Between Two Peers on Friday nights, uh, immediately following the Coach's Corner. Um, so her timing and scheduling is a little, little sketchy and her co-host, uh, happens to live in the same house, uh, with, uh, our new coach, Duke Thorfinn. There she is. There's the Tulia. So, uh, uh, if you haven't seen Between Two Peers Friday nights, uh, 8 PM, I know it's 8 PM mountain. So 7 PM Pacific. Yep. Uh, tune in. Who do you have uh, coming up this week? Uh, this week we've got uh, Baron out of Kaid. Okay. Bjorn. Cool. Bjorn. 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 <laughs> Don't leave names with me. I'm not the names person on the show for a reason. <laughs> I'm so like uh, Tulia's manager. So <laughs> like Friday nights, I'm like, you know, rubbing the shoulder. <laughs> you're, you're Go great. get him, Tiger. Go get him. I'm like her corner guy, right? Cut me, Thorfinn. Cut me. <laughs> hey, get out of the bathtub. You got a show coming. I don't want it. Get out. Cal, go and take me away. Um, it's a so, party. and and uh, tomorrow night, um, there's also, if, if you're interested in watching and analyzing uh, fighting video on Tuesday nights, uh, 6.30, thereabouts, Great Fighters of YouTube um, is uh, Duke Alaric and Viscount Sigurith uh, of the West. Um, they they host a video review session uh, every Tuesday night, uh, which is definitely worth a worth a good watch. Uh, you get to hear some people that know a lot about fighting analysis. Uh, look at some of the stuff that is out there on YouTube, and if you go watch some of that, you will be able to uh, take those links and uh, watch them yourself. And you know, go you know take take the tools we're trying to give you today and look at all the video that's out there because there's a, just a ton of it out there. It's all really great stuff. Uh, Thorfinn, yes. It, to that end, when you're doing that YouTube search, if you know that there's a famous fighter, you know their SCA name, odds are if you type in their SCA name, you will find a video about them fighting. 
right? And you'd be surprised. There's thousands of videos. So there's a lot of rabbit holes you can get down. And once you start getting into like, let's say uh, you look up Duke Alaric's videos, you can subscribe to that. And then that is just triggers a whole nother cascade of videos. So start looking at this, like uh, when you can find, like, let's say whoever the fighter that you want to emulate in your kingdom, literally type in their name. Odds are you're going to get a YouTube video of them fighting. Yep. So my, uh, my Squire Tyrion likes to play six degrees of Sean on YouTube. You pick up random video and see how many uh, YouTube suggestions it takes to get, be, get back to me. Um, mm -hmm. So I've, I've got uh, my channel out there for people that are interested. It's a Duke Sean zero one. Um, and I've got a, a lot of good stuff up there. I don't know, uh, it's been a, been a while since I posted anything fresh. I was about to say, a ton of video you kick in my ass. There's, there's perhaps some. Perhaps some. <laughs> I, I'm reasonably certain there's some uh, video of you doing just fine for yourself. Hey, the, Your Grace. Sir Knight. <laughs> the, the last, you know, I, yeah, they did all right. <laughs> uh, my last crown. Uh, there's a couple other fights on there that are, you know, not too, all right. too bad. So they're out there. Go look them up. Uh, check out the Great Fighters YouTube Tuesday nights. Um, so other than that, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to, to hit us up on the Coach's Corner. Um, but this is the process that we use to break this down. And it is it is the process. And just look at it and, and enjoy it. And because there's, there's plenty of out there, there's plenty of it out there. So uh, make yourself a better analyst. Um, and that'll make us all better fighters. So... Uh, my great thanks to uh, Thorfinn, Helga, Danny. Thanks, thanks all for joining us. Um, let's see. This Friday on the Coach's Corner, we are having a very special episode um, with Thanksgiving coming up. We are, um, our, our, the coaches are, are grateful and thankful for those of us, those that allow us to do what we do. And so Friday night, we will be turning this show over to some of our consorts. Um, we have uh, Duchess Nisa, Duchess uh, Rebecca, and uh, Serenity Ariana um, that will be uh, taking over the show. Uh, so that will be interesting. And, and I know uh, we're all hoping that our ladies have something good to say about us. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so thanks, thanks again for everybody for joining us. Uh, special episode. And we will see you uh, Friday night. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Happy Thanksgiving. Keep rocking. Happy Thanksgiving. Heart. Ha, <laughs>